So I'm sitting here having a conversation with Jay Cross. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to have a conversation with me. I've been following you for a while. I'm stalking you, Jay. I'm, I follow your blog, and, I, and I've learned a lot from you over the years and at, by attending sessions and, uh, and that. So, but Jeff, the pleasure is mine, because if you follow me, you know I consider conversations are sort of the stem cells of learning. Yeah. And we've just been at this event, MLearnCon, mm. and I figured, well, all right, a debrief <laughs> is bound to be part of it, and I'll right. actually remember what happened in the last couple of days. <laughs> so, well, I hope to help you capture that. Is there anything that uh, you've seen at this conference that has got you excited and got you uh, motivated? Oh, there are a number of things. Um, recognition, I mean, three or four years ago, I did think, yeah, mobile was a little flaky because I was thinking more about courses on a screen that's too mm -hmm. small for Jay to read, and it just didn't get me excited. And right. then, then uh, the year after that, well, then, you know, there were some possibilities here. I mean, you've always got this phone with you, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. I believe in learning ought to take place with in situ. Right. Uh, and then, you know, the, the app store, all kinds of capabilities that you can add in. Right. And... This morning, when the three speakers went through sort of the whys mm -hmm. and the size of the market and some applications and whatever, and just to see hundreds of people raising their hands, that, you know, they're developers, that yeah. th this has arrived. Yeah. And there ain't no question that indeed, much as I love my laptop, that's not the way the world's gonna learn. Right. This. No, they're, they're, they're gonna learn on tablets and phones mm. and uh, Everybody be, better be on board or they're going to miss a train. Yeah, I, I used to take my laptop everywhere, and now yeah. I don't. I leave it at home more often than not. So. Absolutely. And it, it's great because, you know, it's, it's heavy and bulky. And, I mean, it, it's, it's a great tool, but it's one of the tools that I have. And exactly. I, I always have my phone with me, and so, I don't know, I'm always reaching for something or looking up something on my phone. So. Well, I've, I've worked for some folks who are trying to get learning down to the factory floor. Hmm. Well, ain't no PCs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there are phones. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with something like Siri coming on board, where you can ask questions and get answers in real time, I mean, that, that is. that's where that's going to be three years from now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. The possibilities. You know, one thing that's really cool is, I, big cup in this, started, this is the third MLearnCon, right? Um, at first, we were just, it was this theories going around, these potentials, right? And mm -hmm. I really feel like people are starting to do. It's happening. Yeah. Uh, not everybody, right? But there is some use cases being built. There is some people that are doing it. And we're learning some things. We've, we're making mistakes, which yeah. is science. We're, uh, we didn't get any learning right for a while, right? And we, some of us well, might we, not. We, we, we sort of got it right, and then it got perverted. <laughs> we really into Sideways. the wrong <laughs> That was my words. All down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, this one is sort of, well, I've got to start right now. We're in the optimism stage. Right, so, yeah. right. So it's fun to listen to the stories of what people are doing and, and uh, how excited people are about the possibilities. They're asking good questions, which is yeah. a good start, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what um, you following this tin can thing? What do you think of what, what's going on with tin can? Well, That's a hard one to. But because you know a number of the people involved are buddies, I'm careful <laughs> here. Uh, I don't think they know how to sell it. I yeah. think that we've heard a lot of things which are sort of well. Here's how it's different from Scorm. Mm -hmm. with the, uh, hold it, what's in it for me? Yeah. And I, I think there's some almost political questions that sure. are going to rise up. Mm -hmm. I mean, having a, a, a learning record store, bad name for it, but anyway, sort of a, you know, a, a fully up-to-date resume of what you've learned, your learning right. portfolio. Well, that's a cool concept. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to vet what's real learning and what's just attendance? Yeah. Or the right place, right time. And yeah. I, I don't see a lot of theoretical work on that. But, I, you know, one thing that I like about what's happening, the community around it has some input in that. And, and that us here, it's our responsibility to, to provide that feedback and to engage. And that's what I appreciate about ADL is they're just putting it out there and say, what do you guys yeah. want to do with it? Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So there's if, a, if they can keep from freezing it too soon, right? Then, like the things in tech everywhere these days, it can evolve and become useful. Yeah. I mean, the 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 pity about Scorm, aside from being a little rigid, is that it was just one individual. It's just people learn alone, and yeah. that's not the way people learn. Yeah. I mean, you know, we learn through conversation, mm-hmm. right? mm-hmm. and Scorm acted like everything was sort of you and the computer. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it, well, I won't cry when that one disappears on us. Yeah, uh, or or when we learn how to better utilize the classroom. Uh, you know, there's there's lots of opportunity for us to improve the way that we teach people. And, and the interesting thing, I think, is that uh, we all kind of know how we really learn. And like you say, it's through conversations. We turn to our coworker and we say, hey, how do you access the whatever, mm-hmm. right? And and so as we kind of explore these new technologies that enable us to have to reach past the person right next to us and maybe the person across the country or the world, right? Absolutely. We're extending that ability to have that informal conversation and learn from it. So. Well, the fact that you can have a community. Right. The, I mean, the, the, the people I work most closely with right now, like every day, I live in Berkeley. Mm-hmm. So Clark lives in Walnut Creek, okay. Harold lives in Sackville, New Brunswick, Canada. So he's, <laughs> you know, not three times, but four times away. Right. I mean, that's way out there. And then you have to hop across the pond, yeah. and Charles is in Winchester in the UK. Yeah. And Jane's up north of there. And yet yeah. we converse all the time. Yeah, could you imagine doing that uh, 50 years ago? My God, I remember when I was afraid to call overseas because the, the rates were like $15 a minute, you know, and it's just, you didn't do that. Yeah. It didn't even come into your consciousness, and now, it's, hi, Skype, it's, <laughs> it's free. Yeah, and it, it's, it's global. So, you know, the, the cool thing is that we have this ability to learn from people that are not in the same place. Not only that, but they're exposed to different things mm-hmm. because their environment is different. Their community, their ecosystem around them is different. So we're expanding in that way as well, yeah. you know, so which is really a cool Well, there's the whole strength of weak ties. Right. You know, the people you know, well, you talk enough, you've sort of gotten that yeah. one pegged, but the people they know because they're in other right. communities is this amazing spread. You go out from there and it's like a million people. And yeah. whoa, now you can get to those people. Yeah. Uh, that's just phenomenal. And th- those people aren't tired of the same story I tell over and over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and also, I mean, the, to me, the key to innovation is when you take stuff from one field or discipline or body of knowledge yeah. and you sort of force fit it into another place and see what connections make. I'll say, hey, discovery. Yeah. Well, there's so much opportunity to do that that wasn't possible when a lot of Profession used to be sort of closed fraternity, you know. Yeah. We're not going to tell you about medicine. That's sort of the secret stuff. Right, and secret now, societies. Hold and, it, yeah. you know, patients like me, we got all kinds of information we're swapping with one another. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to see patients educate doctors, you know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and, you know, it's not a solo experience, like you're saying. It's it's It wasn't just you that experienced that experience with, with a, a, a few other people. So. Yeah, if, if you were alone on a desert island, you wouldn't learn a hell of a lot. I guess it depends on what you had with you. Maybe if you had your mobile phone, you might do okay. Earlier, you and I were talking a little bit about the emotional aspect of learning, and you've been kind of doing some reading and research on that. Tell me what you're thinking there. Well, I, you know, the books that just happened to finally be on top of my reading stack, which is ridiculous. But I was reading Daniel Kahneman's book on thinking fast and slow. And that one shows that we're not as rational as we think. I mean, this is a guy who got the Nobel for behavioral economics, essentially. Mm. The rational economic man, it's all based on, it's BS. I mean, people (laughs) aren't rational. Right. And I've I've read some stuff from Joan O'Lara and from Stephen Johnson, and they're they're more into the mechanics of things. But essentially, your brain is this big parallel processor that's been developing for millions of years and it operates pretty much in the dark as far as you're concerned. Right. But we're coming to appreciate that that's where a whole lot of our decision-making resides. And the part that we're conscious of 
the, you know, the, the frontal lobes up here, that, that's more a spin dock. <laughs> it, you know, it, yeah. it, it, logic is a way that I can express what I decided emotionally is if it's got some extra support. Nice. You know, so it, yeah. it, 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 it substantiates it's, what we're, yeah. It, it's the sales pitch. <laughs> and Kahneman contrasts, uh, this is system one, which is the, the big parallel processor, and system two, which is sort of, well, am I buying this or not? You know, does that fit? <laughs> right. And an awful lot of stuff is system one. And it, it, it is it's totally illogical. Well, the tradition in the training industry has been as if the world is perfectly logical. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, everything's sort of linear and you can figure it out or whatever. Yeah. You don't, that's why there's so little emphasis on experience because you know, right. experience teaches the back part here. Uh, so I've been mulling around, well, what does that do? And it, yeah. it sort of turns the apple cart upside down. Yeah. A specific example. Happiness. Hmm. Happy people work better, produce more. Hmm. They sell 31% more than just the average fare. Yeah. They're 34% more productive on the job than the right. average fare. They're three times as creative. Now, hmm. you'd think everybody would want happy workers, but no, no, no. We're, we're still in this sort of industrial age paradigm. Right. Which, let's see how much we can squeeze out of them and let's add to their plate, yeah. and we're missing the big payoff of having happy workers. Gosh, I've read some article, and I can't remember which learning magazine, but it was like, how do you ruin a good employee? It starts with a performance evaluation. Oh, well, that, that, that's a whole other <laughs> kettle of fish, which is crazy. I mean, performance evaluation ought to be all the time. Right. And, well, I, I was talking with Tom, head of your outfit, a few hours ago about how it'd be so nice that we'd give people feedback at the right time. All the time. You know, say, yeah. Jeff, that was really cool. You know, yeah. glad to see it. Yeah. And then it's meaningful if it's stored up for a year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what you did first quarter, <laughs> that is not going to work for us. <laughs> Why'd you let me keep yeah, doing yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I've, like, I've been disappointed with, uh, <laughs> for the last year. I was like, but, yeah, but you know, yeah. you've already forgotten the first quarter by the time you have a right. session. So yeah. it, oh, it it is uh, it it it's scurry. I, but I I am optimistic. I I see ways that we can indeed support people emotionally and have them happier yeah. and get them more immediate feedback. It, it, it ties it, you know, Dan Pink's thing in Drive about what motivates people. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know, having a higher purpose. I'm not just doing this for me. I'm helping save the world yeah. this way. It's having autonomy where I'm, I'm not just following instructions. I'm thinking this stuff up. Yeah. And it's mastery. I'm getting better at what I do. What? I, that's the same thing that makes people happy. It is. So motivated, happy people, productive, Nice. And I think that there's a phase change in business where we're going from the machine was a metaphor. So indeed, the workers were cogs in the machine. Mm -hmm. you, know, don't, mm -hmm. you know, conform, please, or you're not going to mesh with right. the other gears. And that now people are what creates the value. Mm. Intangibles are where the, the money is being made. Right. And it pops out of our head. So we better be concerned about how all this stuff How healthy works. it is, right? <laughs> and support yeah, it yeah. rather than, you know, try to milk it. Right. Uh, so that's sort of the direction I've been going after. Yeah, these absolutely. Days. Well, it's been great talking to you. How can people, um, you have a blog and uh, you got some things coming up. I, well, I have a blog and uh, recently redid my site entirely because I have 12 years of material and book chapters <laughs> and cases and videos and whatever. Yeah. So jcross.com sort of is the entry door to all of that stuff. But yeah. what I see happening in a lot of companies is that they finally, to my delight, embraced informal learning. <laughs> yeah. The downside is they don't know what to do about it. Right. They've embraced it because they say, oh, well, this is cheap. We just, you know, it's like, well, learn it for yourself. Yeah. And they leave it at that. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> there are all kinds of ways to support informal right. learning and make it a lot better. And nurture it and uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the, the colors of the walls influence mm. how you learn. Yeah, 
uh, having graphics and pictures as well as text yeah. changes the way you learn. Connecting you with the right people. I mean, it just, there's all kinds of stuff. Right. And it varies by organization, well, which is appropriate. Yeah. So I thought, okay, even I'm in informal learning, I'm gonna have a workshop. Yeah. And it, it, it's gonna be for people who've got heads on their shoulders, not people who just wanna go and code. Not that coders right. are bad, but, right. you, know, but yeah. you know, people are thinking this stuff through. And then I got to the challenge, well, how do people learn informal learning informally? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense for me to show them the PowerPoint slides. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Isn't that funny? The, yeah. the only way you can learn it is experientially. Mm -hmm. So what I envision in the workshop, and this is going to take a lot out of Jay, by the way, <laughs> but a, a typical session would be like you know, 10 people because you can't, you can't really personalize things for mm. more than that. And we'll have like a Google Plus conversation, mm -hmm. and most of it will be led by questions. Mm -hmm. People will have a challenge, and the, the generic challenge, unless somebody's got a special one they want to do, is that I want you to come up with an application in your organization that has a bottom line impact of at least 100 grand. And if, if it doesn't, pick something else, because right. that, that kind of money is very doable. Yeah. And then we will go through blogs and social networks and bookmarks and whatever, but how would they apply to this? And then how do I measure the performance? Hmm. And then how do I give the elevator pitch to convince my organization to you know get on board right. and do this? And I figure take about a month, hour to four hours a day, because people are going to be doing a lot of stuff on their own, or they're going to have to reflect on it, right? And start right. Out. And I want the plan at the end of the the exercise. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty turned on about it. I mean, That's I, pretty I, cool. I think it can really work Yeah. and make some differences. Because you know, people read the books and the articles, they go, yeah, yeah, that's the way yeah. people learn. Right. And then they, they go back to the old path. And it that, changes yeah. And, and, you know, that's a, that's a shared experience you're talking about. Oh, right? yeah. So it's not a singular experience. They're not just well, doing it alone, and, and, solo. And a lot of this is about building a community. So we're going right. to build a community. Right. And I would not be surprised if people who you know, are with me for a month or with each other for years, or, yeah. hey, Jeff, you remember that problem? What yeah. the hell do you do about this? That's awesome. And, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. That's awesome. Well, looking forward to continuing uh, stalking you and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, learning from your uh, from what you're putting out there, and we appreciate you sharing it with well, us. Well, look, and at any time, and you can always get me on Google+, Plus and we'll just record yeah. the thing as we go, so that we sounds, don't have to be in a hotel like in San Jose to do this. I know, but it's not bad doing it here, so thank you very much, Jim.